Hi, my name is Alicia and I'm going to give you a report back from the Yale Citizen Summit for the US and Canada that IOTA World was invited to and that I was able to attend. So the gathering happens over the weekend of March 24th to 25th and there were really great topics that went on. There were so many topics. I would have loved to go to all of them, but I'll just give you guys an update, a uh, really brief update on the topics that I went to. So I actually was involved in sustainable cities, coalition building, North American caucus um, at Rio um, to disseminate information, as well as um, exploring interfaith approaches to sustainable development. There were many, many topics, as I noted, um, and some things that I was able to walk away with. I will give you some perspective on that and a little example of where I think that we can go in the movement. So in terms of intergenerational perspective, I think that that was a pretty good showing, um, but there's a difference between intergenerational perspective and intergenerational solidarity. And so in order to cultivate that, um, I think that what needs to happen with us as activists working on the work that we do is to make sure to cultivate spaces where we have um, the older generation and the younger generation coming together to form solutions together and not to talk at one another because you can actually miss uh, a lot of important relationship building that's needed to move forward. The space was really open in terms of um, dialoguing around diversity and there were some explicit um, disappointments with the lack of diversity, but I think that it's also a good sign that people could actually speak about it in an open space. So kudos to the, the whole organizing team that was able to successfully create a, a space where people felt safe enough to actually challenge that. Um, so thinking about women, thinking about people of color, and thinking about indigenous peoples becomes very important in how you describe the language of Rio Plus 20 and sustainable development. And also how do you address having holistic solutions? It becomes really important. So let us think about that as activists and as we move forward. Another thing that was really key that I heard an indigenous woman say that got me really to thinking and woke me up a bit, uh, gave me a bit more education about some of the things that I could do better to incorporate diversity is that um, there was a lot of talk about U.S. and Canada as nations. But as she pointed out, there are hundreds of Native American tribes. They are actual nations recognized by the by their governments in both the United States and Canada. And so when you say nations, you need to recognize that nation does not just cover, um, in the case of indigenous peoples, um, their colonizer. Um, and, and that's to that, that's not even to put it lightly, that, that's, that's what it is. Um, so there are some other things that we can do as activists, and we can make sure that we talk about the general framework of the UN in ways that people can understand it. Take it out of the context of the UN jargon, which is really a lot of goobly gook for people, and try and break it down to whatever your population is or whoever your community is. And the last thing that I would just like to say is that we really need to think about the underpinnings of how we talk about sustainable development, but also how we practice sustainable development. And I really do believe that we cannot actually achieve sustainable development in ways that will continue to foster good relationships if we do not do it within a framework of human rights, poverty eradication, and peace, and a culture of peace specifically. So, what that means as a really quick and very short example, um, if you are looking to build a building and you wanna make sure that the building, of course, as a sustainable development person, you wanna make sure that the building is eco-friendly. Are you using sun panels? How are you making sure that the energy gets circulated throughout the building? Um, what happens to the land, the soil where you build your building? How do you make sure that you're not um, disrupting the biodiversity that may be surrounding the building. But then taking it to a human rights perspective, your people, are you paying them a livable wage? Not just minimum, but livable. Are you employing people in terms of a justice perspective from the community um, that is uplifting them out of impoverished situations? Are you 
creating relationships in the community, talking about a culture of peace. How are you incorporating the major stakeholders, the people in that community that are going to have to live with that building being in their presence? How are you incorporating them into understanding how to build um, the building, but also how the building will affect the dynamics of the neighborhood? So thinking about it in those ways, we can then branch out and thinking outside of a building. How are we doing our activism? And are we using a culture of peace framework? And are we using a human rights framework? And where for those organizations that can actually employ people, are you doing it in a way that can help eradicate factors of poverty? So those are my thoughts. Let me know what your reactions are to this. Definitely post. Um, pass the video around, get the conversation going, the buzz going about sustainable development. And we will continue the conversation there. Thank you.